Senate uh, GOP leader Mitch McConnell is in hot water with members of his own party, uh, in the other chamber anyway, after helping to push through a series of bipartisan legislative victories for Joe Biden. While formerly nicknamed the Grim Reaper for shutting down Democratic legislation, McConnell is now at odds with House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy. Joining us now is CNN's Melanie Zanona. She broke this story and CNN political commentator Essie Cup. Mel, tell us what's happening here. Yeah, well, Mitch McConnell, as you know, used to have this reputation of the Grim Reaper because he was known for killing Democratic legislation and keeping his conference together. But lately, Mitch McConnell has been responsible for keeping some of these key bipartisan victories alive that Democrats are now touting on the campaign trail. Last year, he voted for the infrastructure deal. Earlier this summer, he voted for gun reform. And just this week, he supported a bill that would increase chip manufacturing and make the U.S. more competitive with China. And so that has really put him at odds with his own party. It has especially put him at odds with House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy, his counterpart in the lower chamber. And it's created some frustration and tension among Republicans, especially in the House, who want to see senators fighting tougher. Uh, but look, some of his allies, McConnell's allies, say that there is a method to his madness, that he wants to prove that the Senate can still work, and perhaps more importantly, wants to show middle America that Republicans are just not reflexively opposed to middle-of-the-road legislation, especially on an issue like gun reform. And so he is facing a much tougher battleground in the Senate than in the House. There are different calculations between Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell, but it is still notable to see how differently they approach everything from <coughs> politics to policy especially on the issue of Donald Trump. They're very different when it comes to how they've treated the former president. And so that could become even more pronounced if they're in the majority next year. I see there's, I guess, the substance in the soap opera of this. Let's start with the soap opera. Please. Um, shall we? <laughs> Always. So, so McCarthy, McConnell, yeah. who wins? Well, I think it's fair to say um, Mitch McConnell is in a much better position. He knows what he's doing. There isn't no reason for why he's picking these fights. As, as Melanie indicated, uh, Mitch McConnell, A, wants to preserve the filibuster, B, wants to at least appear to be a working partner um, to show that, you know, he can get some stuff done and that allows him to object to other stuff. But most importantly, he wants to regain the majority. And um, stuff like the gun legislation, it, he heard from suburban voters all over the country that they were really upset about the rise in mass shooting. So he's playing that game. The game in the House and Kevin McCarthy's real motivation only seems to be own the libs. Uh, don't ever support anything if it will politically advantage Democrats, even if it will advantage voters. Um, it's a grosser game, but that's where Kevin McCarthy seems to be. Speaking of the game, the game normally with Mitch McConnell is chess. And with Kevin McCarthy, it's more like tic-tac-toe. What are you saying, Bree? It just he's is. He's just not as good at this? It's just known. Yeah. Mel will yes. tell you on the Hill, <laughs> you know, Mitch McConnell is known as very <laughs> strategic and Kevin McCarthy is not, Mel. Yeah, but it's it's different in the House, in the Senate. You know, in the Senate, sure. you have people who represent statewide. In the House, you have these gerrymandered districts. You have a conference that is becoming increasingly more conservative. And so for Kevin McCarthy, it is a different game. Let's also keep in mind, he's trying to become speaker next year, and he will need the support <laughs> of the conservative base, of the former president. And so that is also what you're seeing here, whereas Mitch McConnell, he's very safe in his position, despite Trump calling for people to oust him. He maintains a good standing in the conference, but nonetheless, there are are people already jockeying for his position yeah. once he decides to step down? He, he's safe mm -hmm. in his position now, mm -hmm. S.E. I mean, the, the, the Senate makeup is changing election by election also. And depending on who wins in November, he could have people who look a lot more like the ones that Kevin McCarthy is dealing with in the House. Definitely. And I think he's very aware of that. And so regaining the majority, I think, for him is about his own preservation, as well as, um, you know, the, the Senate at large and the Republican Party. But he's aware that he is not um, untouchable. And especially looking down the pike, we've reportedly heard that Donald Trump wants to pick a fight with both McConnell and McCarthy so that he's the main show on, you know, in 2024 in November. So a lot of moving pieces, a lot of chess pieces or tic-tac-toe. X's, X's and O's. I think that was Kevin McCarthy calling now, I know. <laughs> right now. Who was Having calling? some words. Who was calling? Um, <laughs> do you, I wonder if you think Essie... This new mansion deal, which, let's just be clear, it doesn't require 60 votes. It's a budget reconciliation process. If they win over Kirsten Cinema 
and they have the 50 votes. It's just a party line vote. Mm -hmm. Does that change anything? If, the, if, if Biden gets this big victory with yeah. this climate change and these, this health care package, does that change how some Republicans look at what Mitch McConnell has done as, as saying, OK, now you've just added to his victories. list of victories? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the concern, not just in the House among Republicans like Kevin McCarthy, but even some Republicans in the Senate are worried about the optics of Biden winning. I guess the good news for Republicans, if you want to be real crass about it, is that a lot of this stuff won't be felt by voters for some time. So it's not like they're going to feel it immediately, like a stimulus check, and then run out to the polls in November and vote for Democrats. It's going to take some time. That's um, tricky for Democrats who want to be able to sell the wins. But um, sure, Republicans are looking at the politics of all of this, not just the policy. And, and Melanie, I just don't want to leave this hanging out there. For this legislation that McCarthy is upset about, there have been at least 10 Republicans every time who voted for it because presumably they think it's good for their constituents. You know, the, Kevin McCarthy right. can argue it's not, but these Republicans think this is good legislation they're voting yes on. Oh, clearly. I mean, that's part of the calculation here is that, especially McConnell knows this, he's giving cover to his most vulnerable members to be able to support these deals on everything from guns to infrastructure. These are popular in America. These are popular in suburban battleground districts. Um, but it's interesting that Kevin McCarthy not only opposed some of these deals, but he actively whipped his members to oppose them. So it goes even a step further than just him opposing it himself. But nonetheless, some of his members defied him and voted against the whip count anyway, and they they cross party lines in the House to join with Democrats in supporting these bills. But I think privately, Kevin McCarthy has cut these members some slack. There's not going to be any punishments for crossing them because he knows deep down this is important for all of them to win back the majority. Melanie, great reporting. Essie, thank you so much for the commentary this morning. Great to see you both. So we were just talking about the Joe Manchin Chuck Schumer deal. It was a deal that sent shockwaves across the Capitol this week. How will this bill, which deals with climate change and health care costs, drug prices, how will it affect your life on a daily basis? Joining us now, CNN Chief Business Correspondent Christine Romans. Romans, there's a lot in here. Yeah, you know, they've branded this the Inflation Reduction Act price tag. You've heard about it, $739 billion. But what's in it? Here's some of what's supposed to put money back in the pockets of people who need it most. Historic price caps. For the first time ever, allowing Medicare to limit prescription drug prices, seniors and people on disability would pay no more than $2,000 a year out of pocket for the prescriptions they buy at a pharmacy. Very big deal. Obamacare subsidies. People buying into Obamacare would continue getting help paying their premiums. They would pay no more, no more than 8.5% of their income, and that's down from almost 10% before. Uh, some could get subsidies that eliminate their premiums altogether. The bill would also help people save money on energy costs. Ten years of tax credits for homeowners for things like rooftop solar panels, electric heating, air conditioning, and finally tax breaks for buying an electric car, up to $7,500 for a new one, $4,000 for an EV, a new uh, uh, used EV. That, that's an extension of the current tax incentive, uh, but the income level to take advantage of that would be lowered. Bottom line, it looks like they're trying to target people who really need it instead of spreading money around to everyone, which was criticized in COVID stimulus, guys. Yeah, all that. Plus, Larry Summers told us that he thinks this bill fights inflation, and inflation affects everybody. Yep. All right, Christine Romans, thank you very much.